So I've been doing real estate wholesaling and investing for the past four years and I've had my channel for four years as well and I realized that I never actually made a proption video explaining and breaking down how to utilize the platform in order for you to succeed in this business. So this video is going to include tips and tricks and in general whole setup of PropStream and how to utilize it in your success. So if you never use PropStream or you just got it and you don't know what to do, this video is for you. When you come to PropStream, you get to sign up for $99 a month, which is, in my opinion is a great price. Honestly, this platform gives you everything you need, but let's get it started. So you come in into PropStream. Let's say you are trying to work on Tampa, Florida. So here in the search bar, which is really cool, you can put in address, you can put in a city, you can put a county, or you can even enter a zip code. In all of those situations, it will be able to give you results. Sometimes even, let's say you're working on a vacant land that doesn't have an exact address, you can actually just put in the address without the number in the beginning, so without the house number, and it will show you the whole street, and so then you can kind of figure out which land you were actually talking about. And by the way, guys, we're gonna dive into a little bit more into PropStream, but if you wanna check out PropStream, if you want a seven day free trial, check out the link down below in, in the top pinned comment, and you will be able to get a seven day free trial. It's my affiliate link. So if you do utilize it, it actually helps me as well. So it will be like an appreciation for this video. So I do appreciate your support. All right, so you put it in the address, right? Now you can see here, you got a bunch of different things here, right? So this is properties listed on MLS, pre-foreclosure auctions, bank loan, cash buyers, liens, vacant, high equity. All of that stuff is super important, but let's say this. MLS, you can have commercial properties, land, single family homes, multifamily homes. What properties are you really looking at? You have to specify what properties you're looking for. This is where a filter comes very handy. So you go to the filter and you start by figuring out what kind of a motivation, what kind of property you're looking for, right? So you got owner occupied, non owner occupied, you got, you got occupied or vacant, right? So you can be owner occupied or it can be not or occupied and vacant, right? So this could be no and vacant, or it can be no and occupied. So there's two different types of properties. But right now let's leave it at any. Then you go and you specify about a property, right? So if you're looking for residential, you're looking for single family homes, how many bedrooms, bathrooms. In my opinion, prop stream is probably when it comes to beds and bath, maybe accurate like 50 to 60% of the time. So I don't really consider that to be too important so in my opinion i wouldn't put any baths beds and baths but square footage however on the other i would consider that they are probably correct about 85 to 90 percent of the time so square footage definitely you can utilize that year built of course home features how many units you want it you know hoa not hoa right so all of that stuff is super important mls status if, if you're actually trying to market to people that have recently listed and have taken down their listings, this MLS status is super important, right? So you wanna say like, okay, they are failed listings. And there you go, you have 4,628 failed listings, but you wanna make sure that the listings were like more recent. Let's say they have you know been on the market between December 1st, 2022 and today's date. So 769 properties have failed. You then you, sometimes you can even do this. You can even just go and say it's for sale, um, you know, let's say it's uh, on the market for sale, and let's say it's listed below market market price and you got 1500 properties. So props should be analyzed market price per what their analyzation of the property is, right? And most of the time I think they do it by just square footage and stuff like that. So in my opinion, not super, super important. So listed below market price, okay, great. So then you go to pre-foreclosures, pre-foreclosures are people that are in, haven't paid their mortgage of course and they're in some step of a pre-foreclosure right you can be notice of list pendants so that's the initial steps of foreclosure then you got auctions default bank owned ex uh, exclude foreclosures right so if you don't want foreclosures but like i said these are people that are in the process of a foreclosure the prop stream is good for that you can always go to your county records and find that as well but you can do it in prop stream it's, it will still give you data ownership info uh, a lot of times i work with only individuals but sometimes in my opinion mixed could be really good too so if somebody let's say it was a husband and wife and the husband passed away it will be considered mixed because 
uh, the husbands will be in, in the state and the wives will be, or if it's just like tenants in law, it doesn't have to be husband and wife. Let's say they're like brother and sister and the sister passed away. So her property, her uh, side will be considered in an estate and his side will be considered uh, regular. So that's considered mixed. So mixed could be good as well. Trust, corporate. Corporate, obviously you got LLCs incorporated and stuff like that. People that actually know what they're doing most of the time. Um, not saying that I haven't done deals when people had a property under LLC, but most of the time they know what they're doing. And trust, I have bought multiple properties under trust, right? So it's very, um, it could work. And then you got all the other stuff. Let's say like, okay, numbers, properties owned. This is very important. Let's say if you're looking for cash buyers, which this property gives you opportunity to do that. So if somebody, you want to know a cash buyer that owns many properties, right? So they're like a big time cash buyer. So therefore you can kind of put in the information there. When it comes to absentee owner location, when you're looking for uh, people that are not located here, let's say they're landlords, right? So let's say, let's, I'll give you an example. Let's go ahead and clear this up. Let's restart the page and I'll show you how you would look at that because it's actually pretty important. So a lot of times the many deals that I have done were with people that are landlords, but they are out of state landlords. So to give you an example, right? So you're looking at not only occupied, but occupied, you don't want them vacant. And then you want to say, okay, so it's a single family home. The ownership info, I like to go individual. Let's say it's individual or let's say mixed. And then let's go ahead and say that the owner is actually out of state. So these are 2,843 properties that are owned by an individual or a mixed owner and they are out of state. So their mailing address is in a different state. So for these people who live in Texas, for example. So this is very important, right? So you kind of want to see when it comes to motivations because propshing is kind of like just a tool. Now it's up to you to mix and match different characteristic of the property or the characteristic of the owner in order to find what is cons considered motivation. Obviously you got the liens and all that stuff, super simple. Um, you know, if somebody has an active lien, you can always stack property. So let's say they're out of state and they have an active lien, the out of state and they have a divorce, the out of state and they have a bankruptcy. So you can try to stack those. And a lot of times you'll find like extremely motivated people potentially because they got more than one motivation. Therefore it actually makes sense for you to spend your money marketing to those people that have more than one motivation. When it comes to value and equity, it's important, right? So like, let's say you want to, um, doing creative financing, you want to make sure someone has hundred percent of equity on equity in their home. So it means that these people pretty much own these homes free and clear. You can actually offer to these people, you can offer seller financing. So that's very important. Again, but seller financing comes a little bit more down the road. You don't have to think about, it, especially if you're just starting off and learning prop stream, but you, it's good to know that you can actually utilize prop stream to find leads for certain types of creative exits and mortgage info that's going to be more applied towards sub two you want to make sure let's say what kind of mortgages they have do they have assumable mortgage they don't have assumable mortgage you know all that kind of stuff it's uh it's very important right so in my opinion i this this can be really helpful like does someone have multiple loans in the property they got like two three loans do they have one loan you know whatever it is so, I mean, we did choose 100% equity, so loans not really gonna apply to this one. But in general, that could be very helpful. Then you have this stuff, quick list choices. The properties that are on the on market, vacant properties, liens properties, pre-foreclosures, auctions, bank home, cash buyers, high equity, free and clear, bankruptcy, divorce, tax links, flippers, failed listings, senior owners, vacant land, tired landlords, zombie properties, pre-probate. So all of this stuff you can actually just do in here, right? So you can actually toggle it around. But if you want to be pretty quick, let's say, okay, I want to look at tired landlords. Most of the time, these people that are out of state or out of county, um, out of city, whatever it is, right? So, or they're local, but they're just been owning the property for a long time and they consider tired and you know, there might be good potential, um, owners to sell their property. Uh, you got senior owners, right? People that are older and own their properties when it comes to Florida, there's a lot of those people. So, so, you know, you got 24,000 properties, right? But the one thing about that is that it doesn't choose what type of properties. And from here you have to go single family, right? So 
as you can see, you lower it quite some. So, because then there's like um, other type of properties people own, like people own condo, condo and townhomes, that's a big chunk of it. Um, there's also land and all that stuff. Let's say you found the type of properties you wanna work on and you wanna keep track of this list. So what you do is that, let's say Tampa, Florida, let's say you go to a non or occupied and you want to, but you want to do occupied. Let's, let's, let's keep going after landlords. Let's say residential, single family. Let's say you don't want an HOA. You don't want it on the market. You want the owner to be individual or trust. You want them to own the property for at least five years. Let's say, uh, let's say there's no other information here. You have 4,457 properties. Oh, and then one thing, obviously, we want them to be out of state. Let's say we want them to be out of state. You have 446 properties. So these people, right? So you can go ahead, actually do this and add them to a list and all that stuff, but you can also save the search. So you can name the search whatever you want it, and then you can save it. And you can also have PropShim email you when new properties come available in this particular search. So for example, I have these searches right here that whenever the, in any of your properties, and I think it's uh, like whatever, however you, often you set it up, like immediately, daily, weekly, I think I have a weekly. So once a week I get a notification that, hey, there's 200 properties that are fitting your new search criteria. So once every like uh, four or five weeks, I would say I actually run and I find properties that I didn't have before, I add them to my list and we start calling and texting them and doing other types of marketing as well. All right, so these people own this property for 10 years, they bought it cash, it's off market right now, so it's not on the market, but they did have it on MLS. Looks like they actually had it listed for rent at the beginning of the summer, in July actually, for $1,500 and looks like it canceled, so either got rented or whatnot either way so right so you have this all this information you have an estimated value which is not extremely important um it's good for like just like oh, okay i can kind of have a general idea let's say this estimated value is three hundred twenty-five thousand, and the people want seven hundred thousand dollars and you're like um i'm not sure this makes sense most of the time it would you'll be able to tell uh this is the record of how much they bought the property for and when they bought it for and this is the last mls listing that they had you know this breaks down like their cash sale. This breaks down all the property details, the owner's information, property characteristics, um, you know, all the stuff that you can find. Technically, it's a public information that you can find on the uh, property appraiser website, but this is all in one place, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, then you can do comparables, which is extremely important, right? So this is a, a place where you can actually find the value of this property. So PropShim automatically gives you like 20% more, 20% less, I think if I'm not mistaken, something around, along those lines. So, so 874 square feet, 13, 12 square feet. And within a half a mile, these are like just automatically there. You can tweak them however you want. You wanna make sure it's a residential property that you're comparing and let's say you're only comparing to single family homes. Let's say you want stuff that was only in the public market, public record, so there's not gonna be any rentals or anything like that. So there you go, you got this stuff. So you got this property, so 420,000, this 384. So then you have to kind of click and make sure that these properties are very similar or what is the, maybe this one has a pool. I don't know. You gotta click and understand why it's sold for 420, why this one sold for 461. So you have to do analysis and you have to also make sure you're not like, this is like a different rule when it comes to comping. You obviously you don't want to like go over here and run comparables here because you have a big highway dividing this left area and the right area. So this area could be a lot better or a lot worse than this area. You have all these comparables to compare to. So this is like an extremely important part of property. Um, you got mortgage and transaction history, which shows you when they bought the property, how much they bought the property for, what their loan looks like, right? So that's good to know. Let's say if you're doing subject to and stuff like that, that's extremely important information. And you got linked properties is that where you can see all the other properties that they own under their own name. So linked properties all helps with cash buyers and stuff like that. Or if you're trying to market to someone, you can see if they have any other properties that potentially could work for you. So this is where it comes to prop and comparables, right? So, and then you got the my properties, right? So let's say if you did want to get a list from here, you would add it, you would click add list, choose whatever list you want to create. Then it would show up here. I like to sort it by date. Let's say you just pull this list. You have this list of properties. You would click here, click export. 
then it will populate it in Excel spreadsheet. Then from that, you can actually upload it into Skip Tracing and you will have, uh, you will have phone numbers, emails, all that stuff after you upload it to Skip Tracing. So this is, uh, this is where you're gonna be pulling the list from. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do here, right? You can see how many marketing lists this property has been on, which means like, for example, uh, when you have 278,000 properties, I'm bound to repeat my property. So therefore, I wanna make sure this is the only time I've had it on this list, right? So it's not on the other list, so it's not like I skip traced it before. I wanna make sure it's like unique to when, it's, it's a unique property for me, right? So I just started working on it. So for me, that's very important. But yeah, you got all these marketing lists, then you got the contacts. My, the contacts is more like for skip tracing and all that stuff. And I don't utilize Proption for skip tracing. In my opinion, they're not bad, but they're not the greatest. I mean, I guess for the price of 10 cents, it's not bad, but for the price of 15 cents, I get extremely great skip tracing with skip matrix. Um, so I do utilize that instead of PropShim. But when it comes to everything else, PropShim is fantastic. It's a great tool. You do need to know how to use it and take your time to learn it. If you guys do have any questions about PropShim, please leave them in the comments down below. And I appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Hopefully this became very useful. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.